When the warriors of For Honor are talked about, the common discussion always veers away from the Vikings. We either talk about how technologically advanced the knights are, or how racist and evil the crusades are, which they weren't, or we talk about the honorable and anime-like qualities of the samurai and how amazing they were. But when the Vikings are brought up, quite often they're put to the side. They're just barbaric savages of the 9th and 10th century who did nothing but loot, pillage, rape, and burn everything around them. And yes, when talking about the technology of the Vikings, they do fall short of the other two factions. In terms of large-scale and world-shaping military engagements, they d do fall short. But is that all to them? Is this all the Vikings have to offer the world? A bunch of hairy barbarians who howl at the moon? Just a mere footnote in history? Not only would I argue against this line of thinking, I would say it's the complete opposite. The Vikings not only were important to history, but they helped shape the Western world as we know it. Today, I want to dedicate this video to talking about the importance of Viking culture. Now, before we begin, let's make a few points abundantly clear. Vikings did do some pretty awful things in their history. There is documented evidence that the Vikings slaughtered innocent people, raped women, and stole treasures and valuables. There is also evidence that the Vikings took slaves, made forced wives out of captured women, and re-established the slave trade in parts of England, particularly Ireland. Did the Vikings do bad things in their history? Absolutely. But so did every other historical culture, warrior group, or faction in history. To simply dismiss the Vikings because of their moral shortcomings is to be ignorant of the benefits and valuable contributions they made to society. This goes for the Knights, Samurai, Chinese, African, Native American, Aborigines, and every other warrior group or culture in history. Recognize the wrong, yes, but don't ignore the good. Now, with that all clear and settled, let's carry on. When talking about Vikings in terms of combat, people tend to get hung up on the fact that the Vikings lack the armor, weapons, or tech of the other two factions. But what kind of fighting history did they have? What is the history of Viking conquest, war, and violence? Vikings became famous in history and today for their vicious combat prowess, massive size, and ferocious tenacity. The first recorded incident of a Viking raid was recorded in 793 AD during the, sin during the siege of Lindisfarne. The Christian monks documented that they appeared from the sea on longboats, roaring like demons. They slaughtered, pillaged, looted, and eventually destroyed the Christian monastery that they were attacking. Ever since, Viking raids had not stopped. From the 9th century to the 10th, reports of Viking raiding parties began popping up all over European port and river towns, all with very similar stories. Within 50 years after their first appearance in Lindisfarne, the Vikings controlled most of the Atlantic Ocean as it was known back then. They could travel through open channels and across waterways without fear of opposition. Their longboats, which were specifically designed for river travel, allowed them to move quickly and effectively down river channels and allowed them quick access to river towns for looting. However, the Vikings were not done with their conquering. During the 9th century, the Danes began to ravage the English coast, and soon, the Norse took over much of Scotland and Ireland. Only Alfred the Great, King of Wessex in the south, managed to resist them. By the end of the 10th century, the Vikings controlled much of the land that we now know as the United Kingdom. This will come into play later, but for now, we must look elsewhere to see how the Vikings were still leaving their mark in history. In 834 AD, Danish warriors raided Dorestead of the Carolingian Empire and captured it by 850. Fifteen years later after that, it was abandoned by the Carolingians. In the mid-9th century, Vikings made their way into Russia, where they founded the city-states of Kiev and Novgorod becoming prominent pieces of the political and militaristic framework of the state. But perhaps the greatest feat the Vikings reached was in 860 AD, when the Vikings first attacked the Byzantine Empire and laid siege to Constantinople. The attacks were sudden and brutal, and these raids against the cities of the Byzantine Empire continued for 200 years, each Norse leader believing they would not be taken seriously unless they had done their part to contribute to the raids. These raids left such an impact that in 988 AD, the Emperor Basil II requested assistance of Vladimir of Kiev, the Grand Prince of the Kiev Norsemen, to help defend his throne. Vladimir sent 6,000 Vikings to fight for the Byzantines, and they became known as the elite Varangian Guard. Larger, stronger, and more fierce than any other fighting force the Byzantines had at their disposal, their first engagement was against the rebellious general of the Byzantines, Bardas Phokas who they crushed soundly with unyielding ferocity. 
And finally, in 1066, they would reassert their control of England when they helped Normandy invade England. Then, by the late 11th century, they would help Normandy conquer Sicily. By the end of their short history of three centuries, the Vikings established a new Scandinavian empire in the North Seas and would subjugate the whole northern England and much of Scotland. In this time, they would have controlled parts of Russia, Italy, Spain, Britain, and Ireland. While perhaps not as long-lasting as the other two factions, the Vikings left an outstanding mark on the European theater, having, for a short time, controlled much of the known world and had become some of the strongest warriors of the age. But again, many would argue that the Vikings were technologically illiterate and uncultured. Well, were they? Archaeological evidence has found that, although the Vikings would not go on to see the production of plate mail armor and siegecraft weaponry, they were not unknowledgeable towards technology, craftsmanship, and weapon forging. Firstly, they were farmers, very good ones, and adopted and pioneered new farming techniques for farming rye, barley, and wheat, as well as raising fish, sheep, pigs, horses, and chickens for their eggs. The Vikings were also master builders and architects. Excavations of the city of Jorvik, which was built on the ruins of York in the 10th century, yields the remnants of wooden thatched and daubed houses, workshops, and warehouses. Before that time, buildings were constructed using post and plank construction methods, meaning that the Vikings brought with them new and innovative means of construction. More so than this, one need only look at their longboats as mentioned before, specifically designed for river travel, and could reach speeds recorded at about 19 kilometers per hour, which was relatively fast for the time. There's also evidence to suggest that Vikings were decent weaponsmiths, having designed many rudimentary items like swords, axes, and spears with ease. It's also re a reasonable assumption that Viking women were adept at needlework with both cloth and leather, as many remnants of spools of thread, bone needles, and leather slabs of clothing for boots and gloves have been found in archaeological sites in Jorvik and Dublin. To call them uncultured savages who had no sense of technology or growth is simply untrue. I've also heard some say that the Viking religion and culture was just paganistic nonsense, which they gave up for Christianity rather easily. This is ludicrous. Rather, the beliefs of the Vikings were steeped in tradition that shows a devotion and passion that is scarcely seen today. The Vikings held honor in their hearts just as much as any other culture that we admire, like the samurai. The Vikings believed firmly in holding fast to traditions. So much so that even with Christian influence, converted Norse did not fully abandon some customs and beliefs. The days of the week, for example, while the seven-day week calendar may have been developed by the Romans, the names were developed from Viking religious names. Sunday is Sol Day, which is the god of the sun. Monday is Mani Day, who is goddess of the moon. Wednesday is Woden's Day, or Odin's Day, who is the Allfather. Thursday is Thor's Day, and you know who he is, obviously. Friday is Frigg's Day, or Freya's Day. The only exception to this is Saturday, which is Roman for Saturn's day. So, yeah, the Norse couldn't have everything, but they got the lion's share. This is also helped by the fact that Norse languages helped form the bedrock of English, Scottish, and Irish, languages we speak commonly today. Without their language, without their proficiency, we might not speak English the way we do now. Also, our Christmas trees, which we love so much, were greatly inspired by the world tree Yggdrasil, the massive tree believed to carry the different realms on its branches, just as a Christmas tree holds different ornaments. The religion of the Vikings, while slowly having faded from the common and the mainstream, still leaves its influence on us today in small and meaningful ways. It's not just nonsense to be dismissed, but rather to be studied, appreciated, and respected, whether you believe in it or not. I know I respect it. But Vikings, more than warriors, were also traders and explorers. They helped to establish many of the trade routes that the medieval world would go on to use later, such as routes from modern Europe to Russia, the Middle East, northern India, and even as far as China. They opened trade networks with the Byzantines, established new river towns of trade, and even began building merchant towns in new areas and cultures. It's also widely believed that the Vikings began to bring an end to the old practice of trade goods and began re-establishing a currency-based system, which had not been seen since the Roman days, as many silver coins and forms of foreign currency had been found in Viking homes and burial mounds. Had it not been for the Viking bravado, interest in the wider world, and desire for trade, 
we might not have had such early access to the world as we did. Many of the great cultures and peoples beyond Europe might not have known or been familiar to us, and thus exploration might have been stagnated by as much as centuries. The Vikings weren't just powerful warriors, they were passionate explorers and makers of trade. Also, Vikings were adept storytellers. Many of the epics that we like to hear talked about today were inspired by Viking stories. The great story Beowulf, which is considered the first English story to be ever found written in Old English, is one of the popular Viking stories that we attribute to their era. More than this, many of the classic literature uh, people or races that we think about in fantasy were inspired by the Vikings, such as dwarfish culture, often having a lot inspired from the Viking culture, and much of Lord of the Rings was inspired by Nordic armors, Nordic styles, Nordic words. A lot of it J.R.R. Tolkien took from ideals of Viking and Norse background, including Warhammer, including C.S. Lewis. Lots of popular authors took and borrowed from the Viking culture that some people now today say was meaningless. If it was so meaningless, why has it survived and been so unique to us even now? However, perhaps the most important thing the Vikings did for the world was they made an impact on every culture they came in contact with. They were known, feared, appreciated, welcomed, and honored by various different cultures, depending on their interactions with them. Every land and nation they met was impacted by their presence. Their trade and ability to open new networks of river trade and commerce helped open up the world to diplomacy and interconnectedness, which hadn't been seen since the fall of Rome. Their hardiness and ability to withstand new and strange conditions allowed them to settle in new and uncharted places. Their passion for tradition helped to establish lasting ideals, traditions, and practices we still hold true to today. Their love of stories and epics helped to build some of the most famous stories of our day, like Beowulf, and helped us establish many of the archetype, story stylings, and characters that we love. Their ferocity, might, and strength were intimidating to many, but inspiring to the world, a reminder that Europe, though beaten and broken from the collapse of Rome, held mighty warriors and mighty shoulders to carry on the legacy of this continent. And though many Vikings converted to Christianity and joined the Norman Knights, this was hardly a weakness, but a new beginning for them. The Knights of Europe needed mighty and stalwart men in their ranks passionate and hardy women working in their cities and companies, experienced tradesmen and craftsmen to join forces with theirs, and men steeped in unwavering devotion to tradition and loyalty. And the Norse could provide all of these things. The Norse were masters of marine warfare and also marine travel, allowing them to open themselves up and ourselves up to the world. There is no question that the samurai and the knights have superior technology and arms to the Vikings, and they have both left great impacts on society in their own ways. But they also had the benefit of being around way longer than the Vikings. The Vikings only truly existed for a little over three centuries. To discount the Vikings and their incredible role in history is not only inappropriate, it's a complete and utter sin. In many ways, Vikings left a massive impact with only a fraction of the time the other two factions had. It could very well be argued that the Western world, maybe even the world at large, would look starkly different had the Vikings never dared to sail its misty waters. Maybe there's a reason when we hear the Viking chants, the Viking songs, listen to the story Beowulf, or play Elder Scrolls, Warhammer, or watch Lord of the Rings, a piece of us deep down feels inspired, uplifted, because of the impact left by the mighty Norsemen. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in my next one. Take care. Ik weet een naar alder dee, doe me rum dee dan ver.